but let me get on it. That was a great win. Let's focus on that first, and then we'll get to the negatives of it. It was a great win because of Saquon Barkley and the amazing touchdown run where he was athletic enough to burst through and then veer his body on a slant and then run away from defensive backs who were supposed to be faster in this league than running backs. What running back runs away from people anymore? All right, it was a great win because Kellen Moore made a great play call on the tight end crossing route to Dallas Goddard with Jahan Dotson making a strategic pick to to block as the Saints blew their coverage and collided with one another in the middle of the field. It was a great win because of Vic Fangio, who shackled this supposedly potent Saints offense, doing it with a five-man front, changing it up a little bit, with, and getting monster games from defensive linemen, especially Jalen Carter, but BG has to be uh, uh, cited there. It was a great win because the, they lost five players to injury, including the whole right side of their offensive line. And guys like Tyler Steen and especially Fred Johnson weathered the storm. And it was a great win because they won a game where incompetence was evident. Penalties. Twelve men in the huddle. A block punt. Two more turnovers from the quarterback. Shaky third down play calling, which forced them to go for it a couple of times on fourth down, including a stupid on stupid decision not to kick a field goal, put points on the board before the first half. Instead, they went with the fake tush push, and it was snuffed because Calcaterra can't block. And it was such a great win that I'm going to try to be unaffected by uh, the, the, the more ridiculous platitudes. Offered by the head coach, Nick Sirianni, who after the game cited his kid's t-ball coach as inspiration. So I'm going to throw it to Mr. Football here, Bill Calarulo, because this is a game I can't believe they won, first of all, but they did. And so I can't sit here and first criticize the bad that went on, although it was plenty. Because I think Saquon Barkley with that run may have saved the season and the head coach's job what say you? Uh, well, good morning, Mike. Good morning, good morning, Ray. Good morning. It's a victory Monday, so we could start there. I'm with you on the positives. It's a gutsy win. You go on the road. It was a short week coming off of a Monday night. You're playing at a place you haven't won since 2007. You battled a ton of injuries, not only with A.J. Brown before the game, but in the game. You lose your starting right tackle, your starting right guard. You have an entirely different right side of the line. You lose Devontae Smith in that game, Darius Slay. So you got to give them credit for the resiliency to win this football game. But to your point on how did they win this game, at one point they went five straight drives with the following. Interception in the red zone, fumble in New Orleans territory, turnover on downs, turnover on downs, blocked punt. That was five straight drives for the Philadelphia Eagles, and yet somehow they win this football game. Hats off to Saquon Barkley. Hats off to Vic Fangio for game planning to be able to stop that New Orleans run, which I was hopeful he was going to be able to do. I said that last week. But it brings me to the head coach. It brings me to the man that I have defended all offseason in deserving to come back for another season because I said there was a lot more good than bad, and he deserved to come back. And yesterday, so much good. Nick was an absolute moron yesterday. I cannot defend the decisions. And when a player starts to press, it's hard for them to get out of it. They start doing things on the field that are uncharacteristic. When a coach starts to press, there's really no coming back from that. He is the CEO coach. You've heard me get on Dan Campbell. When you're the CEO coach, you can't make bad decisions that lose football games for your team. When Nick is the CEO coach and he makes stupid decisions, not aggressive, not reckless, just plain stupid, I can't defend him. So Nick Sirianni, they won that game in spite of you, my friend. All right, there are some things I just don't understand. And, again, I, I didn't want to go negative from, from the start because it was really a good win. And, uh, I, I, you know, you breathe a sigh of relief. But it was a good win. I mean, they earned it. They really earned the win. Here's what I don't understand because a lot of people go, okay, you, his mentality is to go for it on fourth down, blah, 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 blah. He's regressive. He stays with his, with his conscience on those fourth downs. Here's what I do not understand. I don't, do, I don't understand the third down calls. 
which get it to fourth down. Uh, first drive of the second half, third and six at the New Orleans 37. Third and six now. They run Barkley off tackle. Uh, I mean, why? Uh, uh, okay, so what they're setting up, trying to get a fourth and one so they can push push it? Well, what's the guarantee that you're going to get a fourth and one? It's third and six. Trust your quarterback. So now that, that brings you to a fourth and three, and they go for it there, and Hertz gets sacked because he has to throw the ball at that uh, point. Now, Barkley gets the touchdown and to put him ahead. But then later, they try a 60-yard field goal. And I'm thinking, okay, people are all upset because they tried a 60-yard field goal. They had to try a 60-yard field goal there. He's perfectly capable of making that. It's indoors. He's kicked a 61-yarder. But on third and 11, instead of a mindset to get closer, they go with a deep pass to Dotson, which is incomplete. They're at the 42. How about a, like an eight-yard pattern, which gets them in the more manageable field goal range? These are the things I do not understand on the play calls. Yeah, and on that one at the end of the game, I think even before the play, Greg Olson said, if it's not there, you just got to get enough yards to make the field goal a little bit easier. But the reason I didn't like it when you said they had to kick the 60-yard field goal, your defense was playing very good. So you've only given up six points to that point. You punt the ball. You pin the Saints deep in their own zone, and you trust your defense. This was a defensive game that the defense was performing very well. But when we go back to the first half, I say a lot there's a difference between being aggressive and being reckless. At the end of the first half, when it's fourth and one, there's only 14 seconds left in the game. You're on the 15-yard line. The score is 3 nothing. You're not being aggressive or reckless in that situation going for it. You're being stupid because even if you get the first down, even if Saquon Barkley picks up the first down when you tried to get cute with the fake tush push, you got to use your last time out. So what are you doing? So you're going to have the ball on the 14 or the 13-yard line with no timeouts, 13 seconds left on the clock. Your quarterback just threw a red zone interception earlier in the game, so you're going to make him force something into the end zone? Just take the three damn points. You played a no, terrible I, I, first I half. I totally agree with you. And he's thinking they could squeeze out maybe two plays of, of throws that were incomplete or whatever, um, and then uh, or two, one at least one, and then they could kick the field goal. But you're right. Uh, why chance it at, at that point? Just get the three. Get on the board. You you haven't scored. They're up 3 nothing, and you, you've been outplayed in, in the first half. So going into halftime, tied 3-3, and you get the ball start the second half, I, I see, I can't figure out where the thinking comes from because there's a lot of thinking. There's a lot of analytical thinking. There's a lot of information passed to the head coach. I don't get how the most obvious thing does not play out. I, I really think that Nick Sirianni is pressing. I, I think after the way the week two went, where his decisions were being questioned, he's now doubled down, doubling on this, I need to be aggressive, I need to be aggressive, but he's losing sight of the fact that there's a difference between being aggressive and being dumb. And in that moment, on the road, in what was a defensive matchup, after a bad first half, when you're getting the ball to start the third quarter, you take the points. you got to have a feel for the game. You can't just say, well, we're going to be aggressive. I'm going to stay true to who I am. No, there's a feel for the game. And when you're the CEO coach, which Nick Sirianni is, you can't afford to get those decisions wrong. It's the only thing that he's responsible for on game day. Yeah. No, listen, I agree. Again, when we talk about the field goal, uh, I, I didn't think that was a bad decision to try to kick it. Now, it forced them into kicking it from 60 yards. But if, they, if that's good, and why, why wouldn't I think that he could make that? It's twelve ten, at that point. So I, you know, they're within a field goal. So I, I, I didn't have a problem with that. Plus, it, you, you mentioned their defense had been stopping him. So no, it would have been ten six. It was a seven six game when he went for the sixty yarder. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, it was seventy. And then so that would have put him ahead by four. Would have made it a ten six game. But okay. instead, they gave them the ball at midfield, and then the Saints went and scored and went up yeah, twelve seven. You, you said yourself, their defense have been playing really well. So, but why give them a short field? Well, I, I, listen, you're looking at the short field as opposed to whether he can make that field goal. I'm looking at, like, he's going to make that. He's, I mean, like, how, 60 we, yards is not an well, easy kick. Well, he's going to kick the 61-yarder. This is indoor. Like, I, I didn't see the peril of him. Like, he just pushed it. Like, he'll, he'll, he has plenty of leg to make that. But the, the frustrating thing is, in the third quarter, 
coming out of the half, when they got the ball back, they get down to the 34-yard line on a fourth and three, and Sirianni decides not to kick it to tie up the game again. Yeah. So it's like you don't kick before the yeah. half, you don't kick right after the half, but then you try a 60-yarder? I, 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 I just look at the third down plays and go, what are you doing? Like it's obvious. Like you get in field goal range closer. Like don't don't like risk a bomb there. Like to throw to the tight end and and nestle in there at about the thirty five, and, and then have him kick the three. And how about that tight end, man? I kept saying I'm sick of asking for the Dallas Goddard game, and now we finally got one. Yeah. All right. So listen, uh, Eagle fans, digest what you saw. A big win, but a lot of stuff to complain about. Six 